I'm terrified of success because of deep-seated emotional trauma. Well, there's no likelihood of that. about <laughs> destroying the things you love by giving them away. I'm your host, oh my God. Jacob Waska. Oh my God, I'm your host, Sam Young, and I am sitting here in astonishment, ladies, gentlemen, and folks. I am flabbergasted. He got the tagline right. I don't know why you're so mean to me off, <laughs> off mic. This is what I think podcasts are supposed to be like, and damn it, it's just not fair. I'm sorry, I zoned out there. So this, this is a slight break. Uh huh. We had... About uh, it took a lot while to get through it, one of our assignments. Yes, it did. It wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> because of locating it. I'm surprised that you found thirteen ghosts really easily. Oh and yeah, I it took me. I struggled to find Western Django. It took five seconds for me to find thirteen ghosts. Yeah, I think all the people who wanted a copy of Sukiyaki Western Django just had it and were like, nah, no one else needs this. It's done. <laughs> this is for us. This is this is ours. This is for the true fans. They call them the Django's. It's not like that other Django. This is the true Django. Which Django are we talking about? What's the other Django? I realize there are three Django's. There are. There's the Italian one. There's Italian Django. There's, there's Sukiyaki Western Django. And then there's Tarantino's Django. Yeah. Who comes into play on you this You would quote. think there would be more machine guns and coffins. Is there not one in... The Tarantino one? No. You know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It's actually your turn to go first. Yeah, all right. So, Sam, what piece of shit did you make me watch? Because this was a punishment. Yeah, it was. So that is not our usual tagline. That is a legitimate question. <laughs> what piece of shit did you make me watch? I made you watch the 2000... Whatever. Who cares? 13 Ghosts. The remake of the, uh, the movie 13 Ghosts. Starring Tony Shalhoub. It really does star Tony Shalhoub. It really does. He's really in it. Present, Tony Shalhoub. 13 Ghosts is a movie where Tony Shalhoub is a traumatized and also terrible father who has a very creepy son who's obsessed with death and a daughter who is late teens. I don't know. I don't remember. Like <laughs> That's another thing. I haven't seen this movie since the time I hated it. So. Sure. Except that's not how the movie starts. The movie starts mm. in a nondescript junkyard where an evil ghost-possessed demon truck and other nondescript, like, carcasses of dead cars fall on vaguely evil paramilitary people <laughs> because they're trying to capture a ghost in a glass cell scrawled with evil runes. I want to remember what the bad guy, who he's played by, because it's actually someone, like relatively competent i feel that's... defeated I'm why just gonna so? come i'm just gonna come clean i feel very defeated f murray fucking abraham salieri himself all right sam it's happening what's happening like you know when was talking about when he started taking <laughs> vacation. <laughs> oh they're throwing me the ball and i just i can't i got nothing <laughs> it's not there it's just been too long i think and and this your stuff, razor wit is gone yeah i just I don't fucking care about this movie. That's good. There's you shouldn't. There's just nothing there. It's bad. It's a bad movie. <laughs> it's a very bad movie, uh -huh. but it's uh -huh. not interesting bad. It's yeah. just boring. I mean, the that's... most interesting part in this fucking movie <laughs> is that the guy from Hackers, my favorite character from Hackers, serial killer, <laughs> is in it. As he play? a loser who, <laughs> okay. like, has to convince Tony Shalhoub and family that ghosts are real. And he doesn't lead in with the obvious statement of, hey, 
ghost surreal. He is like, have you heard of like wraith entities? <laughs> Spectral <laughs> events? <laughs> to which Tony Shalhoub understandingly goes, what are you talking about? Are you a crazy person? No, man, like g- 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 ghost surreal, man. <laughs> I think it's coming back to you. (laughs) And it's just... So the big set piece for this fucking film is that there is this magical mansion that is this see-through glass prison for 12 ghosts. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. There's I like the way you said 12 ghosts. 12 ghosts. <laughs> like that was a really big disappointment for you. <laughs> well, it's not a disappointment, but guess who the 13th ghost oh, is? Oh, I wonder who it's going to be. Tony Shaloub. Oh. He needs to kill himself to save his dead wife. And his kids. I forgot that that's the twist. That's the twist all along. That's There's the twist. several twists. Yes. Uh, twist number one is there is a traumatized woman who looks like the competent, not the guy from Hackers, to save the, save the day. Yeah. But she was actually working for the bad guy all along. Twist number two, yep, three. Two, two, you got two. You think the oh, bad three, guy no, is no, one no. of the ghosts? Yeah, because it's like it starts with his will, and he's like, "Oh man, I'm oh dead. yeah," because he dies. He was alive all the time. Yeah. He dies in the first scene, and so you should have figured out that out because the woman makes out with him at a point. She's like, <laughs> "I love you, not Tony Shalhoub," and he's like, "Bitch, I know it." And he pushes her away, and it's very rude. He's like, "Where are the magic spells that are on a track?" And she's like, oh, they're here. And he was like, good, I was going to kill you if you didn't have them. <laughs> Kisses. I've got a little off the rails on the, t- uh, <laughs> on the, uh, so on the summary. So. I spoke to eternal friend slash patron of the podcast, mm. Thomas Howard. Yes. About 13 Ghosts. And he talked about when that movie came out for him, being a, a small teenage boy mm. growing up in rural Alaska and how he was ahead of the scene. He was into that Blair Witch project and mm-hmm. that into that era- uh, razor eraser head. Not a racer head. <laughs> right. He was Pinhead. really into David Lynch in the seventies. The one with Pinhead in it. Oh uh Hellraiser. Hellraiser, eraser head. Those are kind of the same. Yeah, Shut I can up. see that. There's a certain linguistic uh, communion there. And he remembers watching the previews for Thirteen Ghosts yeah. and thinking, oh this has the potential to be good. And wasn't Wasn't good at all. But what really pissed him off was that all of his friends, who were not those horror film aficionados Mm -hmm. that Tom was, were really like, oh, man, it was so scary. (laughs) Did you you see this ghost that I was like, he was like a baby giant baby man and he vomited on himself. (laughs) Oh, so scary. And that happened. Fuck. I knew I hated Well, it doesn't vomit on himself. He has like spit up close enough he's like 400 pounds like he's a giant giant baby man he's got like his elderly mom with him yeah it's it's very grody the other thing is 13 ghosts was actually quite successful Mm. at the box office beating several critically good movies that i now you're gonna hurt me that i don't remember off the top of my head we might add add this in later okay because it's actually I'll, i'll go look it back up but sure like i think it beats actual scary movies that were out at the time. Interesting. Tom was telling me about it. Like, it, it was this kind of obscure horror film that was quite good and still holds up. That 13 Ghosts just blew out of the fucking park. Wow. It just utterly destroyed it. I think it got third that opening weekend or something like Oof. that. Second. Second. Jeez. Opening, yeah, opened second. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I knew I hated this movie for a reason. And it was made here. Yeah, that doesn't surprise it's me. It's made... I think in and more. Because, <laughs> like, you see where the house is, and that's that that's looks Anmore. like and more. That's and more. Like, there's at least one paved road, and it's surrounded, <laughs> and it's surrounded by trees. <laughs> that's and more. That is very much and more, baby. <laughs> that's and more. So baby. you don't like this piece? I of don't shit. like this piece of shit. Tell us about your feelings about sure. this movie. I saw this probably pretty shortly after it came out on video with mutual friend Adrian. The origin story of Jacob and my friendship is with Adrian, actually. So it's come full circle is what you're trying to say. In a way, in a sense. That Adrian brought me into this world. Yes. And Adrian is personally responsible for 13 ghosts. (laughs) I was going to say... We dedicate this episode to Adrian. Sure. (laughs) I was going to say he was responsible for this podcast, but no. Let's go with that. 13 ghosts. He's the patron of 13 ghosts. He is the 14th ghost. We would like to dedicate this particular episode to Adrian. Okay. 
We light a candle for you, buddy. <laughs> we watched it with his family. And I can't take any more. Adrian liked this, didn't he? No, I don't, I don't remember what Adrian thought about oh, it. Oh, thank God. Okay, um, never mind. I'll shut up. <laughs> and the reason this is significant to me is because it was the first movie as a young adult that I thought, I hate this. It's badly made. It's exploitative. It's just terrible. And this was a little spiritual awakening for young Sammy boy. And and from from frame one, I hated this movie. It was just so poorly put together. The only thing that's interesting about it is kind of the aesthetics and kind of the special effects. I don't know if they hold up because, again, I've only seen it once. The special effects are terrible. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. Well, they're they're good for the time and and they sort of hold up in that regard. Yeah. And even as, like a horny 13 year old or whatever I would have been all of the cleavage and like there's barely any there's a sexy ghost though right sort of she's naked if that's enough to be sexy that's what I remember I remember being very like oh come on movie Uh, like even me her breasts are out yeah but she's got like lots of open gashes and like gray skin yeah didn't do it for me well I didn't do it for me either apparently I just remember it being more uh, obviously like sexualized and not as creepy as it maybe actually is so there's a point for the movie no I just I, I just hated it and having not seen it in a long time it probably is much worse now basically it's just boring yeah there are some funny bits the problem is that it's another case of jacob waskow thinks of funnier things the movie could have done well that yeah so (laughs) that's why we do this podcast like the second scene is that family and it's trying to set up how broke they are and how tony shalhoub is a miserable piece of shit yeah he's a real asshole because his wife died in a house fire and so it opens with this very creepy small child talking about someone's severed head being found in the news <laughs> okay and he records these on like a tape recorder okay and so that's the kid's thing yeah so you're like oh this kid has the shining he doesn't uh, <laughs> but tony shalhoub is trying to drink coffee and trips over the kid's scooter oh, like a little yeah, roller sure. scooter thing and like just absolutely explodes at this child for leaving the scooter on the floor no monk control your emotions and everyone is like oh Man, Tony Shalhoub, why are you being so mean? And so, flash forward. Yes. It's nearly the end of the film. Yes. The daughter and son are trapped in, and this is real, an evil razor-sharp gyroscope in the middle of a room. <laughs> and I remember this now. <laughs> and the gyroscope is spinning, yeah. and that's the setup. Tony Shalhoub has to kill himself through the evil gyroscope to release the ghosts. And I think, lighting up, because Tony Shalhoub looks over, and I said, he's going to see the scooter to jam the gyroscope. (laughs) And he doesn't. He doesn't see shit. Oh, no. He just looks over, realizing, I must do the thing, because I am Tony Shalhoub. And he leaps in very dramatically to save his children. And they leap out. Don't know why the kids didn't just jump out, but... I I hate it when movies set up really obvious things like that and don't pay them off. I guess it was just to, to demonstrate that Tony Shalhoub... The actual Tony Shalhoub is not a good person. (laughs) That is not what it's saying. (laughs) Because you could see that kid's heart just break that Tony Shalhoub would say that to him. (laughs) He really looked up to him. He really Uh, liked Wings. (laughs) Yeah, he loved Wings. I forgot Tony Shalhoub was in Wings. He was in Wings. I have no idea who he was. Uh, Probably one of the brothers. I don't think he was. Okay, I don't know who he was, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't one of the brothers. I think he was like one of the regulars. I I didn't think that... I, as a human being on this earth... Know more about would, wings than I do? No, just be talking about wings. We're, that we're talking about wings at all. Well, I made a monk reference a few minutes ago, so... Monk's vaguely relative. Yeah. People who know wings are at least in their 50s. <laughs> it's just... It was just boring and bad. Well, that, it made an ideal punishment then. I guess that's you true. You were made to suffer. I guess you've won. Yes. Good job. A point for Sam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we're if we're taking score on mm-hmm. hits as well as punishments, you get the first punishment point. Mm-hmm. No, the second, because you're the asshole who made me watch Tommy Knockers. Yes, but we both lost. I lost points on that too. No, I'm at negative one, so really I've I've zeroed. No, you get a point for that. Okay, you're magnanimous in defeat. No, this is like golf. The higher your score <laughs> is, the worse the you've worse done. You are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was I all, 
no, it was all that wor- got you. It was all worth it for that. I will say, I do like the house. Yeah, the, the house, house is cool. good. I remember one good kill from it. It's totally obvious. It's but the it, lawyer when he gets sliced. Yeah, by yeah. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, we're we're um, we're together on that. There's glass doors that are like they, keeping the ghosts. Yeah, in. and they just scissor down on yeah, that guy and yeah. he's split in half. That also reminds me. B plot moment. Yeah, there's like a gamillion dollars in a bag. Yeah, there's in the middle of thirteen ghosts. <laughs> money that they forget about. Do they just forget about it's it? It's straight up not. You think at the end there's like a black sassy uh uh-uh, uh mm-hmm. like babysitter I guess. Oh yeah. Although she's more like a maid, which is creepier. Yeah. More black. I thought that's what you were referring about when you're talking about the like exploitation part of it. Oh well, I that mean, was yes. weird. <laughs> um and. The movie literally ends on her going to, nah, uh, I quit. This ghost stuff is too weird. Neck bob. But you think she's going to just find the money. Yeah. No. Again, that's the setup. That no. should be the pay- The money is literally okay. just forgotten about. All right. Well, give it a rating. <laughs> 13 out of 13 ghosts. <laughs> and like golf, the higher no, it is. 12 out of 13 ghosts. 12 out of 13 ghosts. Yeah, okay. You have to get a perfect score or you don't pass. 12 out of 13 ghosts. Whew. Okay. Uh, moving on. Jacob, what did you make me do? I made you watch the Tarantino classic, <laughs> Sukiyaki in, Western in, Django. Already incorrect. A uh, film starring Quentin Tarantino <laughs> as Quentin Tarantino. Yes, he is playing himself. So... I know this is kind of an abnormal way to look at this. We need to talk about the opening first. Okay. Can I just say what the movie is about first? Sure. Okay. Sukiyaki Western Django is a Japanese movie that is doing a spaghetti Western. It's more or less a fistful of dollars. A lone gunman comes to a town where two factions are fighting and he plays both sides and then ultimately he defeats them. Which is interesting because Fistful of Dollars was actually based on Yojimbo, which is a Japanese film and it's just a long circle of pop culture, and we'll we'll get to talking about that. The plot is actually very, very simple. Like, there's a love interest, there's an old mentor character. Yeah. It's pretty basic. Now, why do we need to talk about the intro first? Other than the really obvious reasons we need to talk about the I intro think first. we need to talk about the obvious yeah. reasons. Okay. So the movie opens with Quentin Tarantino and one of the most bizarre cameos I've ever seen in a movie playing a cowboy who is confronted by a Japanese cowboy. Three Japanese cowboys. Three yeah. dudes. After ripping open a snake for an egg. No, that's the end. <laughs> no, that's the beginning. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And... He says a bunch of weird shit. He talks about the War of the Roses. He talks about the R- War of the Roses, but and also... And then recites a poem about <laughs> dealing with death at a specific Japanese Shinto temple. Yeah. He also and talks- then kills three dudes. Yeah. And then a woman says how much she likes him. Um, Who you meet later in the film. You do meet later. That's a twist. He also talks about the war between the actual uh, Heike and Genji clans yeah. from an actual period of uh, Japanese history. But that doesn't matter. That, that None is, of this matters. None of this matters. So, Jacob, why do you like this piece of shit? I think it's just fun. <laughs> I think it's just, like, there's no real, like, fucking... There's no magic here. I like the idea, and this is true, that this Japanese auteur filmmaker looked at Spaghetti Westerns and went... <laughs> So they're speaking English. I don't know any English. Yeah. We should speak English in this film. But they're not speaking English in Spaghetti Westerns. They're speaking Italian, which is dubbed over English. Yeah. I didn't say this was good. I said this was the reasoning. And so you're watching a lot of Japanese actors really trying, (laughs) really genuinely trying to learn English. Some more successful than others. Oh, yeah. Everyone sounds like they're strangling their lines, though. (laughs) Like everyone. Yeah. And... Quentin Tarantino's in it, and there are a lot of amazing, beautiful, goofy mm-hmm. fucking moments in it. It's like Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. If you it, remember that film. Yeah, it's a lot it is a lot like Kung Fu Hustle. But it's uh taking itself a bit more seriously, unfortunately. Yeah, to a certain degree. Yeah. I just think it is fun. It's okay. just popcorn fun. So what do you think I thought of it? I think you liked it. Ah, <laughs> This is not a visual medium. This is not a visual medium. I just... Jacob, what did I just do? Uh, You spun around and took your shirt off to reveal that you had written written upon your back that you loved it. Yes. And you have a little heart that says, (laughs) Sukiyaki Western Django. And you're actually wearing a white kimono right now in in response to one of the main characters from this movie. (laughs) I'm surprised you didn't point that out at the beginning of the show that I was dressed like that. I wanted to keep it down low. Keep it cool. I just thought you didn't like my kimono. 
I was actually very jealous of the kimono. <laughs> it's one of those things that I've I've always been as a very chubby white guy. Mm-hmm. Always wanted to have, mm. but no, no on can't. a very base level, mm. I should never mm. wear and never own. But I, as a skinny white guy, I can get away with that. Uh, you yeah. can get away with a lot in the privacy of your home. Absolutely. I really like this. Yeah. A couple of caveats, which is the Tarantino stuff is really weird, and I feel like it's a bit of an intrusion. Uh, uh, it's uh, that they asked Tarantino to be in it. Yeah, and you know what? More power to them. Yeah. The director of this has done a billion movies. Oh, yeah. He did the Phoenix Wright movie, which some people say is the only good video game adaptation movie. I believe that. Yeah. Because Phoenix Wright is a video game series that is a movie. Yeah. No, I loved this movie. I loved the costuming. It's all these people, they're wearing kimono and... Cowboy hats and But and cowboy hats, but there's also like combination clothing. Yeah. Like they've got these sort of dusters that are very Japanese style. The color palette of the movie is really well thought of and... Well, and like, it's, it's it's red and white. Red and so white. there are a lot of reds and whites and browns and yeah. like... And usually there's contrasting colors when you are away from the conflict itself. Yeah. At first, I thought I was going to need to go find subtitles for it. But A, the, the plot is very simple. Yeah. And B, them speaking English in Japanese accents actually kind of works for the genre. Oh, yeah. And it washes over you after a while. Like, and mostly, they, they mostly are understandable. There's a few a, t- It's almost why the opener, I think, is there. The opening happens it with Tarantino and you're like, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. What's going on? But by then, you've gotten <laughs> used to it. Uh, you've gotten to the vibe. It's, it's the... Uh, the antipasta. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the digestif. It's <laughs> yeah, the opener. Yeah, yeah. Aperitif. Although digestif is the closer. I don't know what the yeah, opener the is. Aper- you have an aperitif first. An aperitif. Um, that little opening scene is actually a real... That's a great little short film in itself, despite my misgivings. Well, also about the setting. Like, well, like th- this is what I was going to say. The opening is like a stage play. Like, there's a little sun hanging in the yeah. background, and there's a mountain. And This is like a weirdly high production, like, high yeah. school play all of a sudden. I was almost disappointed it wasn't all like that, but I, I, I got over that pretty yeah. quickly. Having them speak that way, emulating spaghetti westerns, is really cool. It's a real risk, and I think it pays off a lot. Even though I think that's not for everyone, for me that really works. Bullshit, like, we're going to make our actors unintelligible. That's great. And also some of the writing is amazing. Again, yeah. Again, my favorite. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to be al- <laughs> Hell, I'm happy to be alive. <laughs> uh, this is another, like, totally me thing. Typically in Western movies or things that are based on Westerns, the metaphor is often, this is actually the Civil War we're talking about. And they're not, I mean, they kind of are. But between the two factions, there's a reference to this period of Japanese history. But they keep talking about Shakespeare and the War of the Roses. They talk about Henry VI. And I like that so much better than it being like, it was the blues and the white or the grays back in the day. I actually kind of thought this was sort of post-apocalyptic. I wasn't, I mean, it's it's just fantasy. It's, yeah. not, it's not real. Because they're in Nevada and the town is called Utah, which I thought was quite funny. Yeah, I just really liked it. I love spaghetti westerns. Uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is one of my favorite movies. So taking that and turning it into a really cool twist is right up my alley aesthetically. This is one of the most interesting movies I've ever seen. It is visually amazing. It's really visually amazing. Um, The downsides, though, I was kind of conflicted about how I felt about this, is the way it As with many movies that are Westerns and... And uh, Japanese. And and historical and Japanese. Well, and action movies in general. The treatment of women is iffy. But I kind of went back and forth on it. So there's a character who... Bloody Benton. Well, not Bloody Benton. There's... um, This is a character I've completely forgotten. In the backstory of the movie, there's a woman who married a member of the other clan. And then he got murdered. And so she went back to her clan and becomes a prostitute to try to, like, be on the inside and get revenge on the factions. And there's an almost rape scene. It doesn't actually get there. She actually escapes. But then there's a sex scene that is not great in that regard. I've forgotten this. Yeah. I think I just blocked this and out. I don't... I'm trying to think of this in terms of, like, my aesthetic and my values. Because we're not a review show. I, like, keep trying to tell myself we're not a review show. And I thought that it worked for the story. Like, what it was doing moved things forward and it wasn't totally gratuitous. On the other hand, I was like, could we just have not? Could we have done something else? So that regard, yeah, I kind of I kind of lost me. And it's a small part of the movie, but it's sort of a, a central part. However, the reason I kept kind of going back and forth on it was that the mentor character, Bloody Benton, 
when you first meet her, she's just like the saloon owner. Yeah. And then it turns out she's as good as the the main character, who does not matter at all in this movie. No, yeah. The, the man with no name character is completely irrelevant. Well, that um, Blake Benton is better. Yeah, yeah. So when you find out she's a badass too, it's a cool reveal. And and basically that she escaped the very toxic relationship with, with, Quentin Tarantino. with Quentin Tarantino, who was horrible to her. Can we talk about the line that everyone remembers from this movie from him? So Bloody Benton sends someone to go collect weapons from wheelchair-bound Quentin Tarantino. And he's sort of waxing poetic about all sorts of bullshit. You find out that they used to be lovers. Uh, and that she's the woman who's you hear briefly at the beginning of the movie. And they had and, a kid. And they had a kid who's the guy who was murdered. And he's wheeling around this weird steampunk wheelchair. And basically, he mentions that the kid's name was Akira. Yeah. And he says, ah, I am an um, anime otaku at heart. And the other guy in the scene just gives a, what? <laughs> and then the movie just moves on. <laughs> And it is such, like, this is why I thought this, this guy is such an intrusion on this movie. <laughs> this is so out of character with the humor that this, this is obviously meant to be humorous, but it's out of character with the humor the movie is doing. <laughs> and I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. It was just so weird and completely out of nowhere. You have to understand that that is the pinnacle of the movie, I think. The other weird thing in the movie is there's a little kid who is the product yeah. of this, you know, star-crossed lovers. And the end of the movie is just white text. And then he went on to become a man, a gunfighter named Django, who moved to Italy. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah, so the canon timeline yeah. is Sukiyaki Western Django, yeah. then the original Django, and then Django Unchained. Sure, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the timeline It's here. all canon. It's all canon. Well, even though it is just anachronistic and fantastical, there's also this, like implication that it's like the japanese colonized north america because they keep talking about there are natives in the area they mention the anasazi and i thought that's cool i almost want to know more about the weird world that this exists in even though it's just there for for backdrop yeah. it's, it's set dressing also another another thing i liked about the way that they combined the aesthetics of the movie is the music it's very Japanese influenced, but there's what we consider Western twangs, uh, Western and twangs, and there's a trumpet solo and things like that. There's, but there's even a dance scene with what amounts to a didgeridoo. Although I don't, maybe that's a Japanese instrument that's like that. I, I don't remember. It's, that that was been a, a while since really this cool one. moment. So yeah, I really liked this uh, in a way I wasn't really expecting to. Uh, you, I thought you kind of downplayed it for me. Yeah, I really, really did. <laughs> did you not think I would uh, appreciate it as much as I did? No, I, I think that I wanted you to have <laughs> that awakening I did. Mm. Uh, because that's not a movie that's easy to explain. Mm -hmm. Like, you, we're trying now, but it's a very visual, yeah. audio... It's an experience. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. And it's a very hard one to convey. Yeah, and I think if anything we've said over the past few minutes rings true to you you should go see this movie yeah if you can fucking find it it's on youtube it's on youtube that's that's, that's what i just did is i youtubed it and yeah. it was for you yeah you can buy it on youtube uh, four bucks yeah five bucks and oh shit i lost my train of thought uh we are encouraging you not to pirate it mostly because <laughs> we couldn't pirate it yeah there's no way no, to pirate we couldn't. this thing what were you gonna say i don't remember um it's very good it's it is very very, very good, good. Uh, very very good oh that i remember what i was gonna say the villain who unfortunately i didn't get pretty much almost any of the names but the yeah. the white villain yeah. who is a genji yeah yeah is one of the coolest looking characters i've seen in a movie really yeah i i know it's like this is all aesthetic i'm not going at this he's from a very point anime view. villain you know he totally is but he looks so cool He's got this the white, white the white kimono that I'm wearing right now. Yeah. But he's also got these Western elements. He's got the um like the uh, saloon pants. Yeah. Like, like yeah. He's wearing pants. like jeans, but he's all he's got the um what are they called? Um, Britches. Chaps. He's wearing yeah, chaps. chaps yeah. But he's got these very detailed like ornamentations on his costume. Yeah. He's good with a gun and he's good with a sword. Yeah. And I like that the movie doesn't split the difference on that. It's no. not like swords or guns or guns or swords. They could be good at both. They well, exist in the same world. Literally, the end of the movie is... Gun versus sword. Gun versus sword. He splits the bullet in half yeah. with his sword. <laughs> tries to slice down onto the gun. It gets stuck. Yeah. And the man the, with no name just pulls out another gun. Yeah, pulls a hidden Derringer out, yeah. basically. This movie is not subtle. It does not know the definition of the word. 
no, I, I love that that villain looked really. He had, also has a piercing in his yeah, lip, which he's was got really like one of those. It just uh, whoever designed that costume really knew what they were doing. Yeah. So on a scale of Django to Django Unchained, <laughs> I give this. This doesn't work. I don't know. It doesn't work at all. I'm gonna try this again. All right. On a scale. From spaghetti to sukiyaki. <laughs> no, that doesn't work either. I have nothing. Oh, fuck me. Uh, I don't. I don't know what, <laughs> what to compare. I give it, it a teriyaki out of ten. Problems are making no contact with. Yeah, me. you're just wrecking this for me. I can't. Fuck. No, oh, no. I'm gonna go with the Django thing. On a scale of Django to Django, I give it three Django's out of Django. So. <sighs> Fucking all right. Let's just keep that. <laughs> it's really good. So, what is our common theme this week? What's the letter? It is E. What was it last time? E. I think it was E. I'm trying to remember what our last episode was. Sam! I know. Oh, come on. You don't. I remembered the opening line. You can remember this. Yes. Okay. Well, that's gold going. <laughs> that's all hitting the curve. Hiroge. What? Hiroge. Justify yourself. The gunplay is erotic. How does this have to do with 13 ghosts? Boobies. No. This is a ghost with a nipple. Ah, uh, we could do better than that. Um, <laughs> These are two very different They're movies. very different. One's boring. One's not boring. <laughs> one's problematic. One's... Oh, shit. Uh, what? They're both problematic. They're both kind of problematic. Um, extreme. 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 <laughs> extreme! Extreme! So, next time, Jacob, what have you got for me? Okay, I have no idea if this is going to work. I, mm. I'm i going to have to come clean here. I came into this recording session not knowing what the uh-huh. hell I was going to give you. So I'm going to give you the most obvious thing. <laughs> the one that you've been waiting for all this time. I feel, okay. All, all these months. Sam, you will play Kenshi. Oh. Oh, okay. My latest addiction. Okay, okay. Can we explain this? Why this is why this I've is actually been playing bad. this game? Yes, not nonstop, but yeah. pretty close to that. Yeah, for like the last two or three month, last <laughs> month. Yeah, two or three months. I like this thing. Yes, you a do. Lot. Jacob has described it a lot, and I've been quite intrigued by it. I might request we kind of do it together, maybe. Yeah, all right, sure. Yeah, maybe we do. I don't expect you to play tons of it. Yeah, like, I mean, this is going to be like for I over can, a week I, or two. I could use a guide. My thing. I've really been second guessing because I feel like ah, this is okay. Let's pull back the kimono a bit to, to borrow a phrase. I occasionally struggle with giving Jacob things that I think he will like and then being wrong or giving Jacob things that he would never encounter out in the wild. And that I think for the sake of conversation, would I be sound interesting. like a spoiled kid. <laughs> I don't know if I, I should like- educate my dumb younger brother or if I should just like try and give him things he likes, but he'll be a snob about it and be like, I don't like broccoli. I like anime and I, I like-, like anime and titties. <laughs> anime titties. That's me. That's Jacob Bosco. I feel less ambivalent now. Uh, okay, fine. This is definitely on the latter half of I don't know if you like this, but it's something you will never look for on your own. You are going to read a short book called... Unoya is a book of poetry, and I will not tell you anything. Wow. I will not give you any more information than poetry. that. Poetry. It's poetry. Wow. Okay. All right. We would like to thank Irritating Rainbow for the use of our theme song, You Broke It, from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was so the close. The song, You Broke It, famously on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, the from the podcast, up. The Breakup. Featuring <laughs> Sam and Jacob using the song, You Broke It. <laughs> Done by Irritating Rainbow on the podcast, The Breakup, featuring Sam and Jacob. Shut up. <laughs> From the album, Where'd the Truck Go? You can find that in the description. Jacob, final thought. I got 12 <laughs> shots. <laughs> That's good enough.